Hey, welcome to the first. The Super Smash Bros. franchise has had some pretty solid single player content along the way. The original on N64 had single player mode, which would later go on to become a classic mode in the other games. There's the subspace emissary from Super Smash Bros. Brawl. Is it emissary? Emissary? Smash 4 had something similar with its Smash Run and whatever that weird board game thing is that I don't want to talk about because it's bad. And Super Smash Bros. Ultimate has World of Light. Although out of all the single player experiences, uh, the one that I find myself drawn to the most is the adventure mode from Super Smash Bros. Melee. Melee? Melee. Melee. I don't know how to pronounce things. It was a fun little platforming adventure that made it feel like it was more than just fight to fight to fight to fight to fight. That's what classic mode was for anyways. And that's where our topic comes in today, because the YouTube user Pasta Power has taken the levels and ideas from Super Smash Bros. Melee's adventure mode and put them into Super Mario 64. Before we jump into this, I will let you know that I will put a link to their channel in the description so you check out some of the work that they've done as well as this hack. Okay, I've spent enough time blathering on, why don't we get right into it? Before we get into the levels, I want to talk about the fact that this game also comes with multiple playable characters. As of this video, the game includes Mario, Luigi, Fox, Captain Falcon, and Ness. They all go as far as to have their own custom set of traits and moves. Mario controls just like he does in Mario 64, but he carries his appearance from Melee, as does everybody else. Luigi has his trademark floatier jump and slightly slippery physics. Fox is crazy fast and even has his Firefox move as his long jump, which is really cool. He's a bit tough to control though, as I soon learned. Captain Falcon, oh my god, look at him run, look at his little legs. Okay. <clears throat> Captain Falcon is decently fast, but his triple jump is much weaker, making it noticeably harder to use him in this game, at least for me. Ness has a triple jump replaced with a double jump that mimics his jump from Super Smash Bros. Melee, which comes to the cost of it being a little bit of a difficult one to land. I think it's really cool how much attention to detail has been put into these characters. You easily could have just slapped a skin on them and been like, oh, look, it's Fox, oh, it's Ness. But the fact that they have their own little traits and moves, depending on who you're playing as, really adds that extra touch to it. They even have their stock icons at the bottom, along with HP next to it. It adjusts your HP according to when you take damage. I chose to play as Luigi, naturally, since he is clearly the best character in Smash Bros. Once you start the game up and open a file, it drops you in this cute little hub world modeled after the All-Star Lobby. Here you get the option to go into six levels, featuring all of the different character icons. It even has its own version of the music. The first level is based off of the Super Mario Bros. segment at the beginning of Adventure Mode. This level is set up as a standard 8 red coins mission. Run around the level and collect all the red coins scattered around various familiar set pieces and receive a star. You know, what I really appreciate is that these levels don't try to recreate Adventure Mode one-to-one. -one. It's more of a spin on it that sort of takes the ideas and morphs it around to work inside of Super Mario 64. I think it makes it for a much more interesting premise instead of just playing through Adventure Mode in another game. After completing this level, I moved on to the one based off of the underground maze. This is my absolute favorite level in this hack. This level takes you through the bowels of a temple full of re-deads, octoroks, and even a like like or two. The octoroks are replacing the eyeball enemies from Mario 64 and shoot out little rocks instead of strange mystery eye orbs? I never understood what those things were supposed to be. Once you make it far enough into the level, you find the Ocarina of Time. Once you obtain it, it plays the song and spawns one of the stones. I love that little detail of having to grab the ocarina to make the time blocks appear. It's such a cool mechanic that didn't need to be put in, but it's just that little extra piece to it that makes it worth it. After playing the ocarina, you can now make your way up some newly created blocks and reach the end of the level, assuming you don't fall through the trap floor. Once you've done all this, you can complete the last platforming section, go down the slide, grab the star, and be on your way to the next level. This next level is based off of the quick escape from Brinstar. You only have two minutes to make your way up to the top before time runs out. It's short and sweet, and yet delivers fully on what it intends to replicate. After reaching the star on the escape platform at the top, we move on to the next stage. Here we go!
The fourth level drops you right onto the Great Fox flying above Corneria. It's another 8 raid coin challenge that has you leaping across the ship to grab them. It even has the R-Wing that you can jump onto that flies you around the ship to collect the coins in the sky, which is a really cool detail. Just be careful you don't get shot by the other one. Okay, we've beaten the Star Fox stage and it's time to move on to the Pokemon one. This is like some strange over-caffeinated Pikachu purgatory. The goal of this stage is to defeat all of the Pikachu, which in turn will give you enough blue coins for a star. Just make sure you don't knock them off of the stage, or else you're stuck there and you will not be able to get the star and will have to restart the level. Here we go! This next stage has to be one of the most creative ones in the bunch. You land in Mute City where you get challenged to race by Samurai Goro and his Fire Stingray. Except you can't just outrun your rival in this race. Not even Fox with his slightly accelerated running can keep up. No, you have to hop into the nearby Blue Falcon and drive your way all the way to the finish line. I absolutely love this, the fact that you can jump into the Blue Falcon and race around the track. Oh my god, it's so cool. Here we go! Now that you've collected all six of the stars from each of the levels, you unlock the door at the end of the hub. From here, you get transported right to the final destination. Here it places you against one final fight against Giga Bowser. All you have to do is pick him up by the tail and throw him into the nearby Smash Ball which I apparently was not very good at doing. But once you do, the game gives you one last star before sending you to the congratulations screen for your character from Melee. This hack really does bring in some creativity when it comes to transferring the ideas over from Adventure Mode into Mario 64. I ended up having a lot more fun with it than I initially expected. The game itself is pretty short, you can complete it in about 20 minutes, but I feel that's even more of a reason to step out and give it a try. The concepts and ideas behind this just ooze creativity, and it's so much fun to play. This hack may be short, but it certainly shines. Thanks for watching another episode of Cop Box. If you like this content, then, I don't know, maybe consider taking the subscribe button out to dinner. Take that like button, cozy up on the couch, maybe watch a movie. You know, ring that notification bell. Ring it so many times that it decides to come to your house and ring back. 